How's it going, folks? Thought I'd post a bit of a potato harvest clip. Um, potatoes and I, yeah, we've got a love-hate relationship. I love to eat them. Uh, they don't like growing for me. So I have had some pretty good harvests, especially from one no-dig bed out the front. Um, we set it up to do uh, another no-dig bed last season, and uh, the plants got wiped out by a virus, I think. So um, that put an end to that. But what I thought I'd do this year round is I tried um, Dan from Allotment Diaries and Brendan from Bacon Soda. They use this method as well. G'day, guys. Um, it's basically using bags and compost within bags or um, drums, not drums, Dan uses pot plants, large pot plants, um, burying them slightly in the soil uh, so the roots of the potato go out into the soil or the garden bed, get some extra nutrients and water from there and you also top up the bags um, like many people do as the potato grows with the idea being you end up with a lot more potatoes growing up the stem. So I've tried that out in a garden bed and I've just also, with some leftover spuds, thrown them in a barrel beside me here, a 100 litre barrel or half a 50 gallon drum. So I'm going to pull them out first, we'll have a look at them, and then we'll move over and pull out the bags from the bed and see what sort of a harvest we get from there. These spuds have been in the ground for since the end of August from memory, so they've been in there around about um, 20 weeks, I think. I um, have to use my fingers to work that out and I'll post it up here on the clip. Uh, so they've been in there definitely long enough to have a decent yield. The barrels and the bags, I actually did a clip on them, but I lost all the footage when my computer crashed, so I'm playing sort of catch up with this clip uh, to explain how I've done it. Uh, the barrels and the bags were filled up with a mix of ingredients. I bought commercial compost, I've used some of our own compost, and I've also used um, commercial potting soil as well, just to top up the bags in the bed over there, mainly because I didn't have enough soil on hand or compost on hand at the time when I made them up. So. Um, I'm just going to pull over this barrel of Desiree potatoes and we'll see how many we get. Uh, from memory there was five tubers went into this barrel to begin with. So I'll set the camera up and we'll tip this baby out for a look and hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm going to get a half decent yield. So what I'm going to do is just grab the handle of this barrel and tip it straight out. Straight onto here. And we'll sort through collecting all these little beauties. Massive looking spuds. <laughs> There's a couple of nice ones. So there we go folks. This is my harvest from five seed potatoes. So they're a proper commercial seed potato and really there's not a great deal of spuds there, so just looking at how moist this soil is and the amount of compost worms that we have all through here, I dare say that, yeah, maybe this turned into uh, more of a worm farm than a potato farm. So we've probably got, oh, two meals worth there. What I do think has happened is we have some potatoes here that have rotted off. Um, I think it's squished through a few others in there, but it's a bit hard to find a lot of evidence. Um, a lot of these potatoes have basically started to rot in here. I know they're not the seed potatoes because the seed potatoes that went in here were fairly small. So um, I think maybe some of the potatoes were reclaimed by the barrel here. This one here has just started to rot. It's got a little bit of a crack forming in it. So it started to shoot again as well. So I think maybe they were basically left in here too long. Um, I was following the garden guides that said 15 to 20 weeks. So what I'm thinking is all these little beauties, all these lovely compost worms, they've probably knocked off all the potatoes that we have had rotten off in the barrel here. And yeah, only been left with a few, so take that one away. Yeah, that one looks all right. So at least we'll get, you know, a bit of a feed out of them. Well, you live and you learn, off to the bags and we'll see what they look like. So these are the potato bags I set up in the wicking beds. Uh, pretty much all following along Dan's idea, where you bury the bottom third or quarter-ish of the bag or pot into the garden bed to allow the potato, the seed potatoes that initially go in, to have um, access to more water and more nutrients in the garden bed itself. So with these guys here, what I pretty much all did was mix um, some soil from the bed, some commercial potting mix, and also some commercial compost. I mixed that all together to make a really rich blend, and that was put into the base of these bags once they were buried down into the beds. 
Then I added a seed potato, covered it up, then came back periodically as the plants grew and backfilled around them with the same blend I had put aside in a bag. So these potatoes grew really well in the bag. We got the purple Congo and some more of the Desirees. It got to a point where I couldn't walk past them just on the little um, bit of a path here and they spilled out over either side of the bags onto the bed. So they did grow really well green wise. Now we just have to see if the tubers down the bottom match the growth on tops. First of all I'm going to do the two purple Congos which are just these two here. I'm just going to pull back this mulch and tip the bag straight onto the bed here and then I can just fill it back into the um, the hole. So first off we have purple Congo. Empty out a little bit of time. Oh a couple of smaller tubers. Let's pop them to one side. So I wasn't too sure how these purple Congos would grow in this method because I haven't seen anyone else use a purple Congo like this. Interestingly, I just want to point out this bit here was one of the first bits. Um, it does show that these purple Congos, as they're being buried, they will form potatoes further up on the stem. So that's a handy point to know. I wasn't too sure if it would work with these guys or not. So it doesn't look like we're going to have a smash hot harvest out of these guys. So I'll dig through the rest of these bags and then we'll have a look at them all together at the end. So there you go folks, there's my massive yield from the potatoes. Um, just to let you know, there was two each of the purple Congos in the bags and there was two each of the Sebagos in each bag and five in the barrel itself. So. Yeah, not, not an absolutely fantastic yield at all. I didn't really want to uh, put you guys through me searching through soil. Uh, wouldn't make for a very interesting clip, so fast forward to now. Just a couple of observations. This potato here is um, slightly interesting, um, mainly because he's got a bit of a green tinge. I don't know if it's coming out on the um, clip there, but I think what's happened is this potato has been near the surface and has copped a bit of sunlight and has started to turn green. Not good to eat green potatoes, can be slightly toxic to us. Also to it's starting to shoot um, on a few different places. So yeah, definitely think these guys were in too long. And the same on these guys. I saw one just before here. Um, just a couple of these guys here are starting to shoot as well. Uh, the purple Congos. So yeah, um, definitely think I've left them in a little bit too long and I think I may have overwatered them. Um, I think I followed Brendan's advice a little bit um, yeah, too exuberantly. So anyway, there's my yield. Um, I'll do a bit of a weigh upstairs and um, I'll let you know how much these all came out to. I'd say there's, oh, there wouldn't be over three kilos for sure. So, so there you go folks, there's a bit of a look at yesterday's potato harvest. Um, I did do a sign off section yesterday, but yeah, when I went to edit it, uh, it was just so loud with cicadas, I was pretty much all drowned out. Hopefully today won't be that bad, except for a kookaburra. Um, as for the, the yield, well, not very impressive at all really, was it? Uh, I have a couple of ideas as why as that could have been. Um, in particular with the barrel just next to me here, it got a lot of water, and I mean a lot of water from the aquaponics. Every time I walked by it, I gave it a drink, and I think it was just too much. Uh, made it too moist in there. Uh, the potatoes rotted, and the worms just had a field day. With the purple Congos, I scrubbed some of them up and added them into a roasting tray along with some Sebagos. Yes, they are Sebagos, not Desiree, I know. Um, and when I broke them open, definitely not the real full-on purple Congo potatoes that I was expecting. So definitely either something wrong with the um, nutrient levels in there or maybe even a pH issue. They just weren't colouring up. I can tell you though that they absolutely tasted fantastic. Uh, they went down really nice uh, with a bit of pork belly, so really chuffed with that. I'll post a couple of links as well to Brendan and Dan. Um, Dan came up with the idea of burying the bottom part of the potatoes um, just in the soil. He's over in the UK. Um, yeah, he has grown some fantastic yields in his. Check out Brendan's channel as well. Um, I really like catching up with Brendan when he does his potato reveals. Um, it's like you're having a bit of a yarn with an old mate, so check out uh, Brendan's channel as well, for sure. Uh, I think he's pretty much all self-sufficient in potatoes. So, yeah, I suppose that's pretty much all it. Um, I have, I mentioned at the start of the clip, we have grown some fairly decent uh, potatoes in the no-dig style um, garden bed. So I might give that a crack next time, as well as some in the air printing pouches. I've seen a couple of people online in different groups had um, fairly decent results in the air printing pouches with potatoes, so I might give that a crack as well. 
But other than that, I think that's pretty much all it. The cicadas are starting to get loud again. I'll leave it there. So my camera battery just died, so we'll finish off with the phone. Um, I hope everyone is well and happy and having an excellent start to 2015. And I will catch you next clip. Cheers, folks. And the weirdest spud of the day goes to this little fella. I think we'll call him Spudley.